This episode of News Dump is brought to you by HelloFresh. Folks, we have watched the new Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> which is available right now on HBO Max or theaters if you're vaccinated or you're living in an area with no restrictions or you just want to risk it all to see one of the most hyped action movies of this year. Hyped by whom? <laughs> by me! Hyped by us, I guess. Uh, but the question on everyone's minds, Mortal Kombat, does it suck? And the answer is yes. <laughs> but it's... It's not a bad movie per se. All right, actually, yeah, it is a bad movie, but but for the right reasons, I think. Uh, basically, it, it was entertaining. It, it did what it needed to do. It was filled with over-the-top violence and cheesy dialogue. Some of it was terrible, but a lot of it was just dumb fun. And to be clear, yes, there is going to be a clear division based on personal preference between myself and Elliot. But you already knew that coming yeah, in. and I'll just... I'll just start off by saying I didn't hate it. I just thought it was kind of boring and forgettable. I thought when I you told it me to be better. when you told me it was longer than ninety minutes, I was surprised because this movie flew by for me. This felt like it was three hours long. This felt like it was too fast paced, uh, which I enjoyed. I was like, all right, yeah, yeah, one sitting, easy, no problem. Anyways, let's start with what worked. Well, first of all, if you're looking for some kind of cinematic masterpiece, you, obviously you're not going to find it here. No. But uh, the opening scene of the movie is uh, the most passable for like. A decent movie. Yeah. The uh, whole seven minute intro is available for free on YouTube directly from HBO Max. Uh, yeah, if you're into like ninjas and shit like that, you'll you'll probably like it. So check that out if you're curious. Yeah, I mean, it's free. That, the, and a lot of people, in a lot of people's opinions and the reviews I read, it was the best part of their favorite part of the movie. It, uh, was, it was interesting. It was long. It was a long intro. And I was like, is this the pace this movie's going to work at? Like, uh, Warner Brothers <laughs> loves long, over explained intros. And that like they had like two in the, the new one. The pacing Woman. in this movie was incredibly fucking weird because they would like, t- like the intro like they they spent a lot of time on that they'd linger on stuff and then there was other parts of the movie where like they would just have Sonya Blade explain like the entire like uh, basically what would what would have been like thirty minutes of plot she just explains it by like pointing at a fucking uh, bulletin board or doesn't explain it at all and the scene just changes and stuff has happened yeah and it's like I kind of appreciated that where it's just like instead of having everything over explained it's just like look this is here now it it's fine anyways yeah you can watch that intro it's on YouTube yeah um, but yeah be aware that it does go completely off the rails after that yeah, um, it turns into a completely different movie there are fatalities mm-hmm. thank god there are special moves it's like canonical <laughs> actually they crammed <laughs> i was surprised at how many special moves uh they crammed into this movie they like they made sure that every character got to do their like unique move not it, just their fatality it's the least they could have done yeah and uh, yeah the the characters also say literal one liners from the game including shit like fatality and Flawless victory in ways that take you out of any immersion you might have had. Just punching through the fourth wall. <laughs> like looking at the screen and going, you, you know the line? They, they might Say the line, like, Liu Kang. I turned her into a child. <laughs> Babe Alley. Or like yeah. that would have been great. Babe Alley would have been tight. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the movie for me was fun, but it's also incredibly cringy. I mean, there were plenty of times where I was jokingly saying lines out loud, predicting the most cheesy possible dialogue that could come next, and then it actually happened. Um, The movie, for being a movie that takes place in a fantasy world, is one of the most predictable movies ever, uh, except for the main plot line, which which confused me that it didn't end up going the way I thought it would. But uh, the main character in this film... I don't actually remember his name at this point, uh, but uh, not very yeah. compelling. Uh, it, something young? I don't know. He's, I, I he's, don't remember his name. He's not very compelling. He's, a, uh, he's an original character. He is an original character. Uh, and it just, when he's surrounded by all these other people, I'm just like, why do we need a new character? Mortal Kombat has three decades of characters. Mortal Kombat has dozens and dozens. Too many characters. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like there was a lot of time wasted on him when it could have been better spent focusing on Anyone else? Liu Kang, for example. Yeah. Who makes mention of his backstory, and it's like, oh, you were an orphan, and then now you're doing, okay, maybe we can spend more time on this than a yeah. guy who, who is a, a, a not a good MMA uh, fighter. They, they take so long to introduce uh, Liu Kang and his cousin... Uh, Kung Lao. Kung Lao. Yeah. And I would have liked to know more about those guys than this new dude. Uh, I will say, having had, like thought about it just now, um, there are a lot more characters in this movie than I anticipated. And I, I, it's like the Leonardo DiCaprio scene where he's like, just pointing at the screen. I kept doing that going, like, 
uh, reptile, yeah. uh, this character, <laughs> that character, this character, that character. Like, ball. like they just fly in and out. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, now the set pieces here and the CGI, they're passable. There's a weird mix of great CGI and horrendously bad CGI in there. Yeah. Um, but uh, look, and the overall story, it's whatever. It's Mortal Kombat. Like it doesn't really matter. I guess they did an okay job with the story. Um, yeah. But the point I'm trying to make here is that it is a loud, violent, dumb, stupid, outrageous martial arts action movie. It, it's nothing more than it needs to be. Uh, and it leans on into how stupid the concept is, whether that's intentional or not. I didn't um, think it was violent enough. Y- yeah. Yeah, I could have done with some could've more. Could have been a lot more violent. Yeah. It, it should have been a lot more violent, if you ask me. They yeah, had, they I made they it tried to, to they tried to hold back to not make it just like that. So the problem the problem is every character in this movie is like a canonical Mortal Kombat character. So every fight has like importance to it. They needed to throw in some like na- more nameless jobbers. Like at the be- the intro sequence has uh the OG like, I'm not going to spoil who the guy is, but the the guy in the, the opening scene gets to fight a bunch of just schmoes and like fuck them up. But every other fight in this movie is like two canonical Mortal Kombat characters going at it. So it's like and there's not it actually lot, matters when they hurt each other. There's not a lot to spoil here, but there is like two main things that like eh, not gonna want to spoil. But uh, look, all the inter- interviews uh, leading up to this to talk about how deep the movie was and and all and I'll, it was about family or whatever. <laughs> no. they, those had us worried months ago. Uh, they have no weight in reality. No. This is, I guess it's about family. Sure, whatever. Uh, but uh, I'm just trying to watch someone's guts get ripped out, and the movie does deliver on that. They do. Um, but yes. even even that like that that was that was a kind of letdown to me. Like I thought there was uh, the guy that gets his guts ripped out. I would have liked to see him fuck up more people too. But none of it matters. Oh, oh, look, you'll see it. Spoilers. Yeah. None of it matters. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to do big spoilers, I guess. But none of it matters because like at some point in the movie, they're just like, "We'll be back." Oh, yeah. By the way, no one actually Nothing dies. dies. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so on the more critical side of things, the casting seems like a pretty big weakness here. Basically, yeah. the lead character, uh, Cole. That's what it is. Cole, yeah, Cole. Young, I think. Uh, hard to get into without outright spoiling one of the biggest non-reveals in the movie. Uh, the, but, yeah, who this guy is. But it, I thought that he was going to become someone because yeah. there's very heavy-handed imagery that keeps playing out. And you're just like, ah, yes. And then it's just like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's like mystery and stuff in there that really doesn't, doesn't ever pan out. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of pointless. Uh, a lot of the characters, aside from Sub Zero, didn't really seem to be all that intimidating or in line with their video game portrayal. Uh, Raiden, Raiden weird, was not weird, intimidating. I mean, neither, neither was Christopher Lambert in the or Lambert in the original. Sure, weird choice. But yeah, this new Raiden, not so much either. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it's also important to not look back on. The 90s Mortal Kombat movie with rose-colored glasses. Because that movie's really bad, too, in a lot no, of other well, movies. Well, I... But also, so that's the thing is, I casting, love that movie. The casting in those movies was better in some ways. Yeah. Not and there's there's parts of that movie that are great, and then parts that suck. I don't know. It's it's strange. It's a strange comparison, so you shouldn't yeah. really like do the comparison, because they are completely different movies. So like, yeah, Sonya is fine. Raiden, not scary at all, despite being one of the most powerful characters. Shang Tsung could have been better. Um, yeah. The standouts, though, uh, Kano keeps the whole thing moving by actually seeming like a <laughs> like genuinely dislike, unlikable, terrible person. With the actor played him very angry. well. Yeah, Kano, Where, yeah. Kano that, that, like, that's an actual performance. That's the only like real performance in this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's like a lot, of, just a constant stream of jokes and quips that fit that character nicely. He's, he's, a, he's a fully developed character. And they're, they're funny jokes that his character can get away with saying because he's an asshole, yeah. which like makes it fun. Yeah. Like, it, it's good. Uh, some of the VO for the other characters, <laughs> downright embarrassing. Oh, um, man. And uh, the fight scenes could have been so much better. Yeah. I don't know. Like the gore and the character specific special moves, like, oh, there it is. Yeah. That was cool. But uh, we're in like kind of a renaissance of like uh, fight choreography right now. Yeah. Um, and this one just, it, this is like, it, it's all, it, this is all in the editing room. Yeah. Really. Like there's, I, during the fights, I was like sort of counting like the cuts. And it's like, 
You know that that uh, that clip that shows up on Reddit constantly of like Liam Neeson jumping over a fence and it's like twelve shots. Yeah, it was like the fights were kind of like that. And it's just it's harder to get into fight scenes when it's just constantly cutting. If you go back to like the eighties, especially like the sort of golden age of like Jackie Chan, like there's like long fucking shots, and it was obviously harder and much more dangerous to make. But uh, you see some of that stuff happen with like John Wick. And, see, like, so those that's the thing is now, like there, it's, it's there, better. there could have been. Look, there's room for some fast cut fight scenes, especially in a Mortal yeah. Kombat. But it would have been nice to see some fully played out, fully choreographed stuff like John Wick and like Warrior, which the yeah. guy that plays Sub Zero is in Warrior, and that has some incredible uh, uh, lengthy choreographed yeah. fights. And scenes. like the actors they got for this, a lot of them are like They're trained ripped. trained martial yeah. artists who like know their shit. And it just I didn't nothing really stood out to me as being like really noteworthy on the choreography front, which was yeah. disappointing. Anyways, uh, talking about pacing for a second, this movie, uh, in my opinion, Elliot did not feel this the way. The middle section of this movie is so fucking boring. I think maybe <laughs> I was just entertained by how like awkward and terrible the dialogue was maybe. during this, where I was just like, I can't believe that this is a real thing that was made. Yeah. But uh, I loved the pacing of the movie. It moved along for me real fast. But it's it, it's funny. I, I mentioned it earlier, but it really dabbles back and forth between either providing too much exposition that blatantly explains to the viewer exactly what's going on and why, and then also just things happening with little to no explanation at all. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I thought it was kind of refreshing. Like, oh, look, they got a plane and flew across the world because Kano knows a pilot. That's it. Like, yeah, I know someone. Yeah. Anyways, here we are halfway around the entire world. And she's like a character and they have a conversation and it's like, oh, is this a character? No, nope. she's... I knew his never, mom. Never yeah. see her again. Nope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's there's there's some really funny uh, stuff that just kind of flows in and out of this movie with no explanation. And I, I appreciate that. It's left to the audience to say, well, this doesn't matter. Ugh. So why think about it? All in all, uh, this movie, it, it isn't going to bring in any new fans to the Mortal Kombat Absolutely franchise uh, be, by way of a compelling film. No. But it is almost certainly something for just the fans of this video game franchise. They don't like it either, though, because uh, the, 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 the uh, backstory to this movie, the, they, they fucked with a bunch of like, oh. plot stuff that the, the hardcore MK fan base doesn't like. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I guess the hardcore MK fan base is that maybe you're not going to like it. I, look, I'm here to watch some fatalities and have some... Like, it needed more fatalities. There was what, like two or three cool fatalities. What I liked about it is, for me, if I was like a teenager, this is like as close as you're probably going to get to like just the terrible movies that were pumped out every week in the 80s. Uh, just because it was like, look, people are buying action movies because you put a cover, yeah. uh, an enticing cover on it, and people rent it at the video store. Yeah. Like, this is that. It is, it is an experience of just, you get to see what a budget and uh, and a dream does. Yeah. And it's it's fine. Um, some of it, yeah, it sucks. Uh, but it doesn't take itself seriously, or at least I, if the re end result is something that looks like it doesn't take itself seriously. I thought it took itself too seriously. Uh, I would have actually loved to have seen this in a packed theater because people would have definitely been laughing and gasping and cringing in unison. It is a, it feels like a very community involved movie, uh, but we can't right now. Um, still, if you have HBO Max and you like the game, I mean, it's there. Uh, if you have no interest, this isn't going to be for you. So please ignore it. Yeah. But you're, if you're watching this video. Because of the thumbnail and title, you're probably at least interested in the in the Mortal Kombat movie. But if somehow Mortal Kombat or maybe even films like Pacific Rim 2 or Real Steel were all too highbrow for you, mm -hmm. well, have no fear. Because it was just announced that theaters will soon be cursed with a movie based on the hottest toy from the 1960s. Rock'em, Sock'em Robots. Everybody remembers those, right? This isn't your great granddad's Rock'em, Sock'em <laughs> Robots. No. That's right. A Rock'em, Sock'em Robots movie is actually happening, and the production has found its start with Vin Diesel. Who will also be pulling... Who is old enough to have played Rock'em Sock'em Robots <laughs> as a child. And he'll be pulling double duty as a producer on the film. So, I uh, guess... Vin, you're producing the Rock Them Sock Them Robots movie. Uh, who do you think should star in it? Well, is there uh, any question? It's me. And def definitely not The Rock. The guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck The Rock. <laughs> I swear to God, if you give him a role in this, and I'll Tyrese is like, and me too, right? Uh, no. Yeah, but we're, we're family, but no. I, I, you can voice one of the robots. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> From Deadline, quote, Mattel Films, Universal, and Vin Diesel are teaming up for a live-action feature take on the classic tabletop boxing robots game. <laughs> 
I love how they call it a tabletop game as if it's like not just bashing buttons. It's literally a plastic mold yeah. with two triggers on each side. Yeah, I'm into tabletop gaming. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like Rock'em Sock'em Robots. What, like Catan? No, no, Ticket no. Ticket to Ride? No. No, Rock'em Sock'em. Mm -hmm. It continues. Rock'em Sock'em Robots was launched in 1966, inspired by an arcade boxing game that pitted Red Rocker against Blue Bomber in a match to knock the rival's block off. So much cannon to mine. <laughs> 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 Rampage and the commuter scribe Ryan Engel wrote the screenplay. Which don't mention Rampage while I'm on set. That's The Rock's movie. <laughs> Get him away from me. I don't care if he wrote it. Wrote the screenplay, which follows a father and son who form an unlikely bond with an advanced war machine. <laughs> this is definitely what? financed by the government. Uh, with Vin Diesel adding, To take the classic rock and sock and game with Mattel as my partner and align it with the kind of world-building, franchise-making <laughs> success we have had with Universal is truly exciting. God damn it. Oh, I'm so excited for the Rock'em Sock'em universe. Meanwhile, like some, there's, there's some scripts. The best script ever is just sitting in a pile on someone's desk somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't have any IP attached to it. We can't do Who's going to want to watch that shit? I just, I literally cannot wait for the movie branded version of Rock'em Sock'em Robots to come out where you control Vin Diesel and the other one is an actual like giant robot, but yeah. somehow Vin Diesel is the only character that can win. And actually, it's impossible for my block to pop off. It's literally glued down. <laughs> it's got a little cross. That's in his contract. Cross it and his fucking wife beater and his cross on. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't sound like a good movie to me. Uh, there is simply no way that that will be watchable. But good for Vin Diesel, I guess. At, at least it's entertaining to watch him try to constantly compete with The Rock on being successful in this business. And just using his brand to crank out as much stuff as humanly possible while he while his star still shines bright. I mean, at this point, it really seems like both of them just approach Universal to greenlight shit. And Universal can't say no because they've made that company billions of dollars because yeah. of Fast and Furious. These guys are cash cows. And they hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like the well, Vin Diesel definitely hates The Rock. I think I The, don't the Rock like, gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, but speaking of billions of dollars. The actual biggest thing in modern media, at least right now, TikTok, is officially being sued for billions of dollars over in the UK and the EU because of allegations that it has mishandled the privacy and data of children using its platform. Uh-oh. From the BBC. TikTok is facing a legal challenge from former Children's Commissioner for England, Anne Longfield, over how it collects and uses children's data. The claim is being filed on behalf of millions of children in the UK and EU who have used the hugely popular video sharing app. If successful, the children affected could each be owed thousands of pounds. Lawyers will allege that TikTok takes children's personal information, including phone numbers, videos, exact location, and biometric data, yeah. without sufficient warning, transparency, or the necessary consent required by law, and without children or parents knowing what is being done with that information. The claim is being launched on behalf of all children who have used TikTok since 25th of May 2018, regardless of whether they have an account or their privacy settings. Yeah. Very serious stuff. Uh, it continues, in response, the video sharing app said, privacy and safety are top priorities for TikTok, and we have robust policies, processes, and technologies in place to help protect all users, and our teenage users in particular. We believe the claims lack merit and intend to vigorously defend this action. Um, this also wouldn't be the first time that TikTok will have faced potential fines for this exact problem. Uh, they were hit by the FTC back in 2019, and also fined in South Korea, both for mishandling children's data. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, look, I'll say, get these damn kids off TikTok. Millennials found it during the pandemic and it's ours now. You can you can leave. We've appropriated it. We do all the memes now. Get out. Don't say we. Me. You're talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, why are kids on the internet at all? Don't you see what a lifetime of access to the internet and social media has done to us? You don't want this life. Look at this face. I'm 21 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was born with the internet. <laughs> Anyways, before we get to the rest of this week's news, including updates from stories that we've been following, let's take a quick second now to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Hello. HelloFresh brings fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. 
Try Meals Ready in 20 minutes or less, or lightning prep recipes and quick breakfasts and lunches. It's all perfect for your busy schedule. Uh, I use HelloFresh weekly, and uh, it's great. I love their extremely fast to put together stuff, like the, the, the I would have this week, uh, firecracker meatball bowls. Those are the bowls. best. Yeah, the ginger um, meatballs. So all good. of their uh, like uh, like tacos and stuff like that are really, really good. And then every once in a while, you get like a gourmet one in the box, and it's like, cool, I guess I'm doing uh, steak and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, shrimp tonight and that's it's all great uh it's helped me learn to cook in general and i enjoy the process so it's i love it so make sure you check out america's number one meal kit and head to hellofresh.com slash newsdump12 and use code newsdump12 for 12 free meals including free shipping that is hellofresh.com slash newsdump12 using code newsdump12 for 12 free meals with free shipping hellofresh.com slash newsdump12 code newsdump12 i'll get back to the news now with some updates um First up, guys, Ben Shapiro bought a piece of wood. All right, as you can see, I just went shopping at Home Depot. You should do the same. This wood, this board, this magnificent piece of poplar is now mine. Now with that out of the way, uh, let's check in on... Uh, <laughs> why is it in a bag? I don't know why it is in a bag, uh, but I, I just imagine like he has his AirPods in and he's listening to like the Home Depot theme song when he walks in. Dun, 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 this is what men do. <laughs> yeah, he comes in, he just smells the wood. Walks around, asks people questions. This like, this, I still think the funniest Ben Shapiro post is when like the first day he moved to Nashville and he like bought boots and a cowboy hat and he's like, "Well, I guess I'm, I'm a cowboy now." Literally, the thing that like Republicans make fun of people for moving from L.A. and New York to Texas. Yeah. To. Not a city slicker anymore. Hey J.I. <laughs> hey J.I. Take me to get a big steak. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's check in on Ted Nugent, who after months of calling the coronavirus pandemic overblown and also exclaiming that he absolutely would not allow that damn vaccine anywhere near his arm. And that also the whole pandemic was just a leftist scam to destroy America. Uh, well, he actually ended up catching COVID-19 and he seemed to be pretty fucking miserable. Oh, man. Uh, well, he has been doing interviews and giving updates, and it seems as though all the uh, schadenfreude uh, that people have been experiencing as a result of his unhappiness has upset him. Oh. Uh, also, that people are twisting his words regarding his previous statements about the pandemic. Oh, around. so it's just like the poop my pants to avoid Vietnam. Uh, you must have misheard me the first time. Yeah. So in an interview with a local ABC affiliate in Florida, yeah, he apparently got it in Florida and might have spread it in Florida. We'll get to that. Yeah. But uh, he said the following. There's been worse conditions and health problems in the past in this country around the world where nobody ever shut down mom and pop diners and shut down entire economic societies in the United States of America. That's what I believe in. I will continue to believe that that's a hoax. But the pandemic is real and the people that are sick are real. OK, so it, Okay. Hey, he's not a, not a hoax. Yeah. He also explained further on his Facebook live stream in the following days saying, you know, comfortably numb is actually uncomfortably dumb because when I said, what about COVID one through 18? They missed the whole point. I know there was not a COVID one through 18, but there were past COVIDs prior to COVID-19 that nobody ever shut down any mom and pop businesses, never encouraged the economic destruction of the entrepreneur engine that drives America. So I was merely commenting that prior to COVID-19, nobody ever shut down anything, not for Ebola, not for Spanish flu, not for AIDS, not for the black plague. <laughs> But they're doing it for COVID-19. So I was referencing those past epidemics slash pandemics as maybe a generalization of COVID-1 through 18. You stupid motherfuckers. You stupid motherfucker. The Spanish flu. They did shut down stuff. Yeah. Like this also, is, it was during a world war as well, I believe. It was, it, the peak of it was like right after World War One. But like, yeah. dude, like there was when COVID was first on the scene, like that was all the major newspapers could write about is just like, well, let's look at how we dealt with this 100 years ago. Yeah. And you had to be actively ignoring it to not see that all the things that happened this time in terms of stopping and slowing the spread happened in 1917, 1918, 1919. I, I am just absolutely fucking blown away that America didn't shut down during the Black Plague. I know. <laughs> People were just more brave back then. I guess so. Uh, anyways, you it looks like a little bubonic plague is going to stop me from heading down to Chili's for happy hour. <laughs> exactly. I don't think so. I don't remember the bubonic plague <laughs> shutting down Kid Rock's Honky Tonk Bar and Grill. <laughs> no, no, sir. Anyways, it looked like uh, it looks like Nugent might have caught it or if he didn't, might have spread it at a local supermarket because just days before his Facebook live stream where he confirmed that he had it and said that he felt like he was dying, he played a concert inside 
of a specifically maskless supermarket in Naples, Florida called Oaks Farm Seed to Table. He played a fucking concert in a supermarket that has for uh, for a long time that like the ABC website posted like video after video of people freaking out months ago being like nobody in the supermarket wears masks. <laughs> like so he did it there on purpose to be like this is freedom. We're here at the seed to feed and we are maskless. I love to be see the one customer who's just like, that's so loud. I'm just here to get my fucking corn pops. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Uh, but uh, in the previously mentioned interview with ABC7, Nugent said he was not responsible for bringing COVID-19 to the area. Quote, you know, before Ted Nugent showed up in Naples, there was already a virus. I didn't bring it with me, goofballs. But it, look, he's coming around. He says it's not a hoax that people are actually getting sick and that the, the virus was everywhere before he got there. Okay. Do I think that Ted Nugent is responsible for the entire coronavirus? No. It definitely did exist before he showed up in Naples, Florida to play a concert in a maskless supermarket. That, yeah, that's, that is true. So that is a fact. He's, he's coming around. Anyway, moving on from that guy. Here's a quick update on more Capitol rioters being caught for dumb reasons. Yeah. Um, a man who was involved in the insurrection was just arrested after he bragged about his involvement on the dating app Bumble. <laughs> According to a write-up in Forbes... I really bumbled that one. Oh, jeez. I, I get so much pussy talking about when I <laughs> stormed the Capitol, but, you know, it's like Russian roulette. Eventually, some fucking leftist thought is going to report you to the FBI. I've been late so many times since <laughs> January 6th, and finally, finally I got my comeuppance, but what a ride it was. So here's what they said in Forbes. Federal authorities arrested a New York man Thursday accused of taking part in the January 6th Capitol insurrection after a prospective date reported him to the police when he boasted about storming the Capitol in a message to her on a dating app. It continues, Robert Chapman from Putnam County was arrested by the FBI and charged with trespassing and disorderly conduct on restricted government property. The FBI were tipped off to Chapman's involvement when a woman he had matched with on the dating app Bumble shared her messages, in which he allegedly said he, quote, did storm the Capitol and, quote, made it all the way to Statuary Hall. Uh, we are not a match, she allegedly wrote, <laughs> before sending the messages and other information on Chapman to the authorities. A review of body cam footage showed Chapman inside the Capitol. So, yeah, it's another, yeah, that was me. What? What? <laughs> I did it. Yeah, I did it. And I it was it. awesome. <laughs> yeah. What's the problem? Yeah, case closed. I thought this was America. Uh, now moving on to news about the Paul brothers. We made it. Apparently Jake Paul is really upset at Pete Davidson for making fun of him during the live stream circus that played out last weekend, resulting in another win from Jake Paul versus someone who is not a boxer and was, hasn't even fought professionally in <laughs> MMA in like years. Yeah. Uh, another jobber for Jake Paul to yeah. knock out. Anyway, according to all the headlines, Jake Paul is calling for Pete Davidson to be banned from being a boxing commentator for good. Yeah, finally. Um, whatever. Famed boxing commentator Pete Davidson, he's going to have to stop doing boxing commentary. His bread and butter. Oh, no. I hope Pete Davidson, boxing commentator, <laughs> has a backup plan Surely. for when that gig falls through. I know. Now, in, in case you can't understand sarcasm, which big problem on the internet these days. Yeah. Pete Davidson is doing fine. He only took the gig because Jake Paul paid him handsomely to do so. so. Yes. And I'm sure that it was actually... Like, he had to... This is the point. It's more of a circus because Pete Davidson's making fun of the person that's boxing. Like, this is all part of the plan. Yeah. It's just hilarious that, like, the headlines are like... Jake Paul is calling for Pete Davidson's bo uh, boxing commentary card to be pulled. Will the regulators take that away from Pete? So it wasn't Pete even a sanctioned fight. This is a thriller. He's, a, he's an SNL star. Yeah. <laughs> he's a movie star. He didn't even care. The, it was the laziest commentating it's, I've ever heard. They, yeah, and they did this with the last one with like Snoop Dogg doing the Snoop Dogg was here this time too. Yeah, but it's just like not even really trying to do like commentary. Just... I, I also love that like Sports betting is such a non-issue these days. I think, actually, Ron DeSantis just passed something in Florida, like, legalized it, which they should do all right. over. Good Sports gambling should be legal. But, like, on, on this event, like, and they're in Georgia, where I don't believe that it's legal, Snoop Dogg's just like, I bet $2 million on Jake Paul. And Jake Paul wins, and he's like, I'm rich! And it's just like, I'm, I'm sure that there's a, he put it in Vegas or something like yeah. that, but it's just like, everyone talks about it so openly that it's just like, Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe Biden. Legalize it. Legalize it. Uh, anyways, on to the other Paul brother. Uh, apparently, the fight between Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather is back on. It is actually going to happen. Huh. Uh, very soon, in fact. Uh, a tentative date is apparently set for Sunday, June 6th, 
in Miami, Florida. The day of okay. the Lord. Yeah. Uh, because uh, obviously it would take place in Florida. No crowd restrictions. Florida's wild like that. If Ted Nugent can hold a COVID concert at a maskless supermarket, why can't Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather have an exhibition boxing match in a sold-out arena? I don't see why not. Yeah. Uh, this fight might actually be worth paying slight attention to, not paying for, just paying attention to, just because Mayweather is already ultra-wealthy, and you would assume that he wouldn't want his career to potentially end with a loss, even if it's an exhibition match. Yeah. It's not a real loss. It would be a loss, but... It, this seems more like Logan Paul is willing to take a potential concussion for millions of dollars in this case. Like, I mean, yeah, Floyd Mayweather is probably going to knock me out, but we're both going to get rich. No, what's going to happen? I'm calling this right now. Okay. What's going to happen? Is Floyd Mayweather is going to do what Floyd Mayweather does and just play defense the whole time and just make make Logan Paul get really tired and he'll go 10 whole rounds without a single fucking landed hit and then he'll win on points. That would be the worst <laughs> case scenario. That's what's going to happen. He's not going to put his body at risk. Yeah, I know, but like... That's just, it's so lame. It's I know. so lame. That's why I, that's why I don't care for Floyd like, Mayweather. <laughs> at least the <laughs> Jake Paul thing, it's like, I mean, you're paying to watch Jake Paul knock someone out or the potential for him to get hurt in some way. But like, it's, it, it's like I said before, it's like Homer fighting the hobos. It's like, you just line up these people and whatever. You can't just like, uh, the, the Mayweather thing with him just dragging out fights, just punch Logan. That's all anyone wants to see. It's all they're paying for. Logan Paul should fight Butterbean. That sure. guy's still alive. Johnny Knoxville did this for free. Yeah. I guess fame. But like, <laughs> I just, man, if they want to be taken seriously, which it doesn't seem like they do, but if they do, they need to start fighting real boxers. I yeah. mean, what am I fucking saying? I'm out of shape. I sit on the couch all day. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, with all these fights, just wait for the clips on Reddit and Twitter. If, don't give them any money. <sighs> Anyways, worst news, save for last. We worked through the video all the way to the Paul Brothers bullshit, and now we regret to inform you that it appears as though Warner Media, or uh, I guess ATT, uh, uh, the parent company, the parent company of Warner Media, AT and T, uh, might be looking to sell Rooster Teeth. Yeah, according to Bloomberg.com, AT and T Inc. is seeking buyers for Rooster Teeth Productions LLC, a piece of its Warner Media division, as part of an ongoing winnowing of non-core assets by the phone giant, according to people familiar with the matter. The pandemic has complicated efforts to sell the business, said the people, who asked not to be identified because the matter is private. So this has apparently been in the works for a while. Yeah. So that would be a uh, terrible, shameful end to yeah. a once <laughs> monolithic, like, uh, shiny example in the online space. Yeah, of like independent uh, digital, uh, originally independent yeah. digital creations. And uh, this yeah. would be kind of the, the final nail in a long line of, complete like digital destruction that Warner Media has engaged in over the last decade or so. I mean, they accidentally, well, Warner bought Machinima and then AT&T bought Warner and they're like, what's Machinima? What the hell is this? Bink, get that out of here. Everyone we know lost their job. Yeah. <laughs> and then the people were like, oh, well, they own Rooster Teeth, so they were probably just dealing with redundancies. And then they're like, wait a second, what the hell's Rooster Teeth? <laughs> Bink. All we care about is HBO Max. Give us that subscription money. Everything else we own can get fucked. Yeah, I was talking to someone recently about this, about like the whole... Like it, it is a conspiracy theory that I, I'm sure people out there share it, but I, I, it's my conspiracy theory that all of these media giants went and bought the MCNs with the person, with the purpose of completely dismantling them because in the early 2010s, YouTube was actually a competitor against mm. certain businesses. That sort of like how all the big auto companies bought the railway lines in Southern California in the early 20th century, only to... Well, like, Dismantle them and build highways for their vehicles. But like, what I find the craziest part of all of it is that like, it seems, it seems as though these companies didn't even try. They just let the MCNs burn out whatever money they had left, and then we're like, whoa, whoops! Like Disney bought Maker. What yeah. happened? Warner Brothers bought Machinima. What happened? Uh, well, Full Screen is also, I guess, Warner now, but originally it was someone else. It was like Verizon or something. Yeah, I, I, I can't even Anyways, they were all bought, and then within two or three years, done. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, full disclosure, I mean, R Rooster Chief does run our ad sales. Yes, yeah, so we're, so, really, we're really hoping this doesn't happen. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we, we would prefer that uh, things I mean, remain, ad sales remain the way they are. To make money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that would suck. It would be really bad. Um, but, uh, yeah, fuck, man. Like, Warner Brothers, like, 
that's the thing is it's like you look at something that's this big and then like to a company like AT and T, it's like what what? This is nothing. Yeah, why do you care? Ah, I don't know. Anyway, anyways, that's, uh, that sucks. That's uh, praying yeah. for the best. Yeah. On that front. Uh, that's it for uh, News Dump this week. Uh, please be sure to watch our other videos over here. We have a, a new episode of Tech News Day where we talk all about the, the Mars rover Space. and uh, the Mars helicopter. Yeah. And then we also have a full breakdown of Mike Lindell's social media website, Frank, which is, by the way, has been currently offline for two days straight. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you for rest. 200 million <laughs> views. We'll be back. My work here is done. Like, he literally put, like, a pause button on the website, a, so, a, a social media website. Well, he's, he's getting, like, 3 billion hits per day. Like, that's a lot of hosting. Yeah. Probably losing money. Thank you. It's a, so far a success. We'll see you soon. What? Anyways, both those videos are over here. We'll see you soon for a, week, a new episode of Weekly Weird News. Bye. Bye.